Hi there, Ford owners. Today in your 2014 Ford F-250 Super Duty, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install Airlift's Wireless Easy Compressor System. And this is what our compressor system looks like when it's installed. This Easy Mount system is one of the cleanest and easiest compressor systems to install because the entire package is wrapped up inside of this mounting bracket right here, which means to mount it up, you just need to mount this bracket to somewhere on your frame or under your bed. It comes with multiple different pieces of hardware for different options on mounting. And one of the quickest and easiest is using the clamp that it comes with. This U-bolt's big enough to go around your frame, and then you just put your nuts on and clamp it down. You really can't get much quicker and simpler than that. As long as you've got the clearance for it, that's definitely my recommended way to get it mounted up on your truck if you're going with this option. And out of all the compressor options out there, this is my personal favorite option because of how easy it is to install. I mean, clamp up the compressor, you're good to go. The harness has everything basically made into it, all of your wires. They go to a single connector, and the rest route to the front where you make just a few connections there. There's a couple of connections you have to make here at the compressor to your harness, but it's all so simple and easy with just the included butt connectors that there's almost no work. It's a lot more work to install the airbags that you're gonna to have to put on before your compressor system. This is a dual channel compressor system, so it will work independently side to side. So if you've got airbags in the back, you can control the left or the driver or the passenger side independently from one another. This is nice if you've got any uneven loads, maybe the loads you've hauled in your trailer. One was really large, but extremely light, and the other load on the other side happens to be also large, but it's very heavy and we can use our compressor to compensate for that extra weight on the one side. And your braking performance is also impacted by having the back end sagging down with the front lifted up because the weight's not transferring properly onto the front brakes, which is where most of the braking occurs. So by adding a compressor system in here with an airbag set up, you can load up your truck and no matter where you are, you can level your vehicle back out. You don't have to go searching for a compressor or a gas station. And if you are constantly loading and unloading your truck multiple times a day, and each of these loads have different weights and you're going from fully loaded to not loaded, you can easily and quickly adjust your airbags at the back to match your particular load. So that way you don't have a lot of air in there right when you've unloaded your truck and you got a real rough ride on the way home. Just let that air out, go load back up, and then you can fill it right back up with your compressor here because it does fill up pretty quickly. Included with your kit, you're going to get plenty of air hose so you can attach your compressor system into your existing airbags. The T-fittings come included with them, which is a really nice added benefit because you can tap into your airbags with it, but also maintain your manual inflation valve. So in the event that maybe you had uh, an issue with your battery or wiring or something where your compressor is not working, you can still manually inflate it if you need to in those events. And the system's wireless. It comes with a remote so you can adjust your pressures. And since it's Bluetooth, it can also pair with your phone and you can download the Wireless One phone app to do all the controls that you can do with the remote here with the phone that you're likely gonna have on you all the time, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to worry about this. You can throw this in your glove box and forget about it since you can use your phone. We're gonna go ahead and go from five pounds to 20 pounds, just so you can get an idea of how long the compressor is gonna run and how fast it will fill up. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit number two, which is our preset for 20 pounds and then we're gonna hear our compressor kick on shortly afterwards. And now we're at 20 pounds, and I'd say it was about 15 seconds, so that's pretty quick. We'll begin our installation by mounting our major components. And with this system, everything's kind of packaged into one convenient mounting system right here. Our compressor with its control unit and everything is on this bracket with this system. And it comes with a few different mounting options to get it hooked up on your truck. We decided to mount ours using the U-bolt that comes included with our kit. That'll fit right around the frame on your Ford. And you're just gonna go in from the inside of the frame with those studs pointing out. And then we can take our compressor and slide it over those studs on the U-bolt. And then we just use a flat washer and a nylon knocking nut to secure it. You just wanna make sure on the other side of the frame that you're not clamping any hoses or wiring in between it when you go to tighten it down. 
we're kind of about midway on the truck here. There's a pretty nice open area here, but depending on your options, you may have more or less components in the way. We did have to move this one hose right here out of the way. So you can see there's a little clip right here. This was poked into the frame, this clip was, just like the other ones around it. Just pulled that out with a pair of pliers, or you can use a screwdriver. And I did drill a hole in the bracket so we could resecure it to our mounting bracket here. So now that it's mounted up, we're gonna to need to tap into our existing airbags, airline system, so that way our compressor can air those up. There are two valves on the bottom here, two little inlet ports. One is gonna to go to our driver's side airbag and the other is gonna to go to our passenger side. They are labeled one and two. One is gonna to go to our driver and two is gonna to go to the passenger. You're gonna get some air hose with your kit so that way you can make this connection from our compressor to the airbags in the back that you've already got installed. You also get some T-fittings so you can tap into those. I've already got one hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and hook this one up here together. And I wanted to show you cutting it. I've already got the other end of this back at the airbag. So now we're gonna trim it to the proper length. And this is one of the most important steps in the process because it needs to be cut square and clean in order for it to seal properly in these quick connect fittings. So first I'm just gonna take the airline and just kinda of hold it up here so I know the, about the right length that I want. And I'm gonna cut it just a little bit extra long because I can always trim a little more off later if I need to. Now with our cutters here, this is a hose cutter. We've got hose cutters here at eTrailer.com so you can add this to your order. The ones we sell on the website are a little smaller and a little more convenient to use just for applications like this. We want to make sure we're cutting perpendicular with our line to get a, a nice square cut. And the razor knife here, when we go through it, it's going to go right through it like butter. And you can see how clean it is there. If you were to use a pair of side cutters or wire cutters, it would deform the hose before it would cut it. And then you'd get a real odd shape on the end that wouldn't seal properly. So now that we've got that, we're just going to route it over to our quick connect fitting here. And it's just gonna poke right up into that fitting. So just push it up in there. And it's as simple as that to make the connection. I'm gonna show you how to disconnect it real quick because the airbags at the back, you're gonna to need to disconnect your existing airline to hook in the T fittings and to add it to this system. Unfortunately, the airbags are extremely difficult to see the quick connect fitting. So I can show you on this one. What you'll want to use is something small, like a pair of needle nose pliers or a wrench that's really small, maybe like a quarter inch wrench. And then you can take this wrench, it'll fit around your hose, and there's a small collar where the airline goes into the compressor. And this is gonna fit right around our hose and we're gonna push up and it's gonna push up on that collar and that's gonna release our hose and then pull it right out when you're pushing up on that collar. It's best to use something like this because you need to push evenly on each side of the collar. If you're only pushing on one side, it's not gonna release. It's gonna be all bound up in there. So now you can see how you release them. We're gonna go ahead and push this back in. And then we're gonna show you the path that we took to route this back towards our airbags. So now we're underneath. This is our compressor here. You can see how it's clamped around. Our airlines run along the side of the compressor and actually go right on top of the frame. We, go, we stay on top of the frame just a little bit until it comes out right here on this cross beam. You can see both of our hoses coming out on the cross beam there. From here, we take our passenger side hose and we just stay above everything, routing it back until we hit our airbag here. Here's the T-fitting here. I just took the T-fitting and put it in line with our existing air hose. So our air hose here goes from the fitting on the airbag, it runs up over the frame and it goes to a manual inflation valve in the back. So I just cut the hose at about a midway point that was easy to access and I just poked the ends of our air hose right into the quick connect fittings on the T there. And then the one that's coming from the front right here that you see is the one coming from our compressor. It taps in there and now we're all hooked together. We've got our manual inflation valve in back that we can air up from this hose here, our compressor here, and then this goes to the airbag there. On the driver's side, it's pretty similar. We do go below the cross brace here for the driver's side, just because there's not a hole in the channel here or anything. So we stay underneath that, zip tied along the way. Get back to our hoses here. We go ahead and zip tie to those as well. We stay away from the brake line hoses and go just to the electrical wires 
whenever possible. And it's pretty similar. It goes to AT fitting over here, and this is the manual inflation line running back. We cut it right here, and we put our T fitting in line. This goes towards our bag, and that's coming from the compressor there. So now that we've got all of our airline connections made, we just need to get our compressor powered up. So we're going to head back over there and start routing our wiring from the compressor to our battery in the engine compartment. Now we can take our harness. You just have a single plug on your harness, so you can't really go wrong with it. It plugs into our compressor here. So we're just going to plug that guy in. And now here back at the compressor, we do have two connections we need to make. Off of our compressor here, there's a black and a red wire. The black and the red wire are going to have a ring terminal and a spade terminal on them. I went ahead and cut off both the spade terminal and the ring terminal. And coming off of your harness lead here, you're going to have a red and a black wire. And they're going to be pretty short. Those what we have right here, these guys that are folded around, is just the red and black wire. Since those are super short, they're going to hook right to the wires here on our compressor. So you can see I just folded them over. I used some heat shrink butt connectors that come included with our kit to crimp them together. We'll show you how to crimp here in a few moments. We're going to be finished routing this up to the front. And when we go to connect it to the battery, we're going to show you how to do that. So we're going to keep going forward here, following this line, just zip tying it along the way. And we just stay on the outside of the frame all the way towards the front here. So we can just route it behind all this factory wiring, keeping it zip tied. And once we hit this body mount right here at the front, we're going to go behind that. And this is the point where it's going to go up into the engine compartment from here. Now we're in the wheel well on the passenger side. Because once we hit that body mount, which is at the bottom corner of the wheel well down there, we're going to go up into the engine compartment. And actually, if you reach behind this, there's enough room to get your fingers in there. So you can easily route that wire back there. You can see it right here. So I just kind of poked it up through here and just pushed it up as I was going along, tucking it behind this fender well. Our harness then comes out up here once we pushed it up behind that fender well. The pink wire, we went ahead and separated and shot off over to the driver's side. We're going to be connecting that later. But our black and our red wires, we kept those over here because this is our positive and negative connection we're going to make to our battery here. Now we do got plenty of length here, so we're going to be cutting off some of that excess. And we also have a fuse harness in our kit. We're going to hook this to the positive side before hooking up our wiring because we want to make sure that we're protecting our circuits from any shorts. So we're going to cut the harness in half with our cutters there. And then we're going to strip back each end of these wires. Now that we've got them stripped back, one side we're going to crimp on a ring terminal. And you're going to get two ring terminals in your kit. You're going to have one with a blue and one with a yellow. We're going to be using the yellow one because that's for larger gauge wires. And our fuse harness here is a little bit thicker of a wire than what we've got routed here. So we're then just going to crimp this guy into place, just like that. And then over here on the other side, we're going to be putting on a heat shrink butt connector. And this is going to be just like the ones that we showed you there in the back. Our heat shrink butt connector is just going to slide over our wire. I like to give it a couple of twists just to make sure those strands are in there. We'll then crimp it down. And now before I connect the other side to our wires, I like to go ahead and just connect this to the battery. So we're just going to pull off this positive cover here. And there's a nut right here. We're going to use our 10 millimeter socket to remove that nut. We'll then just take the nut off. We're going to slide our harness on. And then we're going to reinstall the nut. And our harness here, it comes without the fuse installed. You do get a fuse in your kit. Don't put the fuse in just yet. So now that we've got that connection made there, we can take our wire that we've routed up here. We're going to bring it over, kind of get an idea of how much length we're going to need. And it's for our red wire here. So this should be plenty of length right about there to make our connection. I, and it may seem like I have quite a bit of excess. I just always like to leave excess because it gives you a little more options for routing the wire. And you've also got something there to work with in the event that you want to add more accessories or do any repairs in the future. 
So I'm going to go ahead and cut the black wire before making that connection as well so we can get all this excess out of here. Our black wire is just going to go to the negative right there. So we're just going to hold that over there. It looks like this will be a good amount of length right there to go to the other side of our battery. And we can just move that excess out of the way. So we're going to strip back each end, both our red and our black wires here. We can then take our wires, and I'm just going to route them underneath here just to make things clean. We're going to bring it over to our butt connector there, and we're going to hook our red wire to it. It's just going to slide into the other end of your butt connector, and then you can crimp this down. Now we can take our heat gun and heat up our butt connector. That's going to shrink down the edges to see out any moisture. We'll now take our black wire. We're going to slide the smaller ring terminal on it. And crimp it down. And then we're going to remove the nut on our negative side here. It's going to use the same 10 millimeter socket. And we're just going to slide our ring terminal onto the post and then reinstall the nut. And last, we look up our pink wire. That wire, we just went up and then stayed underneath at the top of the firewall all the way across. We can poke it behind this heat shield here in the back going across and it's gonna hold it up to keep it out of the way. From here, we're gonna go to our fuse box, which is located right over here behind our coolant reservoir. The fuse box cover on here just pops up. I've already got it pulled off here. It is a tight fit to get it in there and get it out of there but it does go in and out. The two release levers are right here, one on each side, so you'll give those a squeeze and then you can pull up to release it. And then you just kinda gotta finagle it around until you can get the whole thing out of there. So now that we've got our fuse box cover exposed, we're gonna be tapping into one of these to get an ignition source for our pink wire. That way, whenever we turn the key on, it's gonna power up this pink wire, tell our system, hey, we're ready to go. It's gonna check our pressures and make sure everything's good before we leave the trip. This Here's our lid and it has all of your fuses labeled on the inside. And if we hold it in this direction, you can see the large relay here in the back. That's this guy here. We're gonna be using fuse number 55 right there, which is this red one right here, this 10 amp fuse. We're gonna go ahead and pull that 10 amp fuse out. I've already tested to make sure this was a fuse that is powered only when the key is on, but not when the key is off in order to excite our system. So we're just gonna pull that fuse out and now we're gonna use a fuse harness. This fuse tap harness is available here at eTrailer.com and it's gonna give us the quickest and easiest way to get an ignition source while keeping all of our circuits protected. This harness is gonna let us easily tap into our fuse box while keeping our circuits protected. It's gonna have two spots for fuses, the lower ones for our original existing circuit, which is the one that we just pulled out. So we can go ahead and slide that in the lower one and then the top one is for our accessory that we're going to add. We always want to make sure that the lead in our fuse box here that is powered, because only one of these two leads is going to be powered inside the box, is always on this outside leg. And I've already tested it. It's going to be the leg towards the outside of the truck, so it's going to insert in this direction. That way power can go up into our fuse harness. It can go back down through the lower fuse for our truck's accessories and then it can go up this leg through the top fuse and out to our accessories keeping us protected. So we're going to come over here to our wire now and hook it up. So now we're going to take the pink wire we're going to cut off the excess. I just held it up there like we did before to kind of get an idea of length. So we're going to trim that off. We'll strip back that wire now. Give a little twist. Then we can take our new fuse harness. We're going to poke this into the butt connector. That comes pre-attached to the fuse harness, and then we're just gonna crimp it on there. 
you need fuse harnesses like this, you can get them here at eTrailer.com. This particular fuse harness is for mini fuses. So make sure you get the appropriate one to match the fuses on your truck, because that's what these little guys are. Well, now I'll just come back in here and we're going to insert our new fuse tap right back into the slot where we had removed the 10 amp fuse. Now that we've got that guy in there, we can reinstall our fuse cover. Now it's pretty normal when you go to put this back on that you have to make a small notch for our wire to pass out. So I'm just kind of looking to get an idea of where this is going to sit. It's about midway, so we're going to cut a little chunk out of this here. And I usually just use my side cutters to do that. If we take the side cutters here, we can snip right there. We're going to come down a little further for our wire to pass through. Snip there. And then after you've made your snips, we can just grab this middle piece. And it usually bends and breaks off pretty clean like that. And now we can reinstall our cover and our wire is going to pass through. Now we're back at our compressor and we need to attach the filter to it. The filter is going to attach to a small nipple located here on top of the compressor. Now it depends on the orientation, how you've got it mounted. On ours it's on top. If you're looking at the airlift logo, it's going to be on the side with the A or at the beginning of airlift. So there, that little nipple there is going to attach to a different style of hose that comes in your kit. Then this is the airline that you're going to use for your filter here. It's similar in shape and size to the airline we were using before, but it definitely feels different. It's a lot flimsier and more flexible than the airline. The airline's a lot more strong and durable than what this is. But this is just for our little filter here. So we're gonna take one end of it, and it's gonna poke onto that little nipple on the compressor. Now that we've got it poked onto there, we're going to take our filter here. The filter has a, an element that is pre-installed in it, so we're good there. It does come with replacements, so if you want to check it or replace it for whatever reason you can, or when they get dirty down the road. We're going to screw the fitting here onto the end. This has another nipple on it, so we can plug our hose onto it. And we don't need to get crazy with this. It's just plastic, so you should be able to tighten it just by hand there. And now we need to get this mounted up. There's a small little prong here and this is just going to poke in. We want to get this as high as possible. So you can look around to see if you happen to have any holes towards the top here. It looks like we don't really have any so we're likely going to have to drill our own and we're probably just going to drill it into this surface right here or maybe this one here. It doesn't really matter just to where it's up high enough and then we can poke this in. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare a drill bit now so we can drill out for our connection there. So now I'm just going to drill a hole into this channel here at the top so that way we can mount this in here. The size you're going to need here for the end, this is about the width of a 3 8 drill bit. So you could use a 3 8 it might be a little loose in there. We're using the size right below that. A 5 16 is going to be a little bit too tight for it to fit. So anywhere between 5 16 and 3 8 is going to be your sweet spot. So the hole that we made, this is just going to poke right into it. It's nice and snug. That's going to hold it up out of the moisture. The higher up you go, the better, but we don't want it to be seen, so that's why we're going to stay underneath here. With our filter mounted, we can then just take the air line from our compressor. We're going to route it over here to the filter, get the right amount of length, and trim off our excess. Once again, using our hose cutters, and this is just going to poke right onto the barb there. Now that we've got all of our connections made, everything's powered up, we're ready to test everything out. Now to test everything out, we do need to put that fuse in here at the front. So we're gonna open up that fuse harness that we installed before. We're gonna take the 15 amp fuse that comes in our kit and slide it down in there. Once you slide it in, this is going to energize everything so it works, and it's also going to initiate the pairing process. So now we can take the remote that comes in our kit, and it's gonna scan, it shows here wireless air. So we're gonna go ahead and select wireless air. And now our remote is successfully paired with our compressor. 
you can see here, here's our pressures in both our airbags. They're both at five pounds. We can increase that with the remote here. So we're just gonna go up to 20 pounds just so we can kind of test it, make sure we don't hear any leaks or anything, that it all works. We hear the compressor kick on, and we can see on the remote here that pressures are increasing. So now that we've got 20 pounds in it, we can go even higher. The higher we go, the easier it is to detect any leaks. But we're going to take some soapy water now and we're just going to spray at any of the connection points where we hooked our hose up just to make sure we don't got any leaks. And you can also listen audibly for leaks. I don't hear anything now, so there's a good chance we're not going to see anything, but it's a good idea to check anyway. So we just took some dish soap and mixed it with some water in a spray bottle. And each of our fittings here, any of our quick connection points, we're going to spray those and we're gonna look for the presence of bubbles. And we're not looking for just the bubbles that you see kind of there, that's from our soap. We're looking for bubbles that continually reoccur, indicating that air is coming out from inside the system. And I don't see any bubbles that are occurring, which means that we don't have any leaks here. So we're just gonna move on to the next uh, connection point, which is gonna be our T-fittings at the back and then at the bags, and just check each one and make sure there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, your installation's complete, you're ready to air up your system, hook up your trailer, and hit the road. And that completes our installation of Airlift's Wireless Easy Compressor System on our 2014 Ford F-250 Super Duty.